Why hello there. My name is Mountain and today I'd like to talk to you about this. And what is this you may ask? Well this is the Arcteryx Valence Gnoming Pack V2 and I'm reviewing it at the request of a few of my subscribers. Thank you very much for the suggestions. So the Gnoming Pack is a sleek black urban use water resistant EDC pack whose main claim to fame is its sleek black minimalist design, its techwear aesthetic, its impeccable construction, and its use of highly technical fabrics and materials such as Arcteryx's AC squared fabric for the body and the same material as their climbing harnesses for the backpack straps. Conversely, its main claim to infamy may be its eye-watering price tag of around 800 US dollars um, plus tax. And it's the combination of these things that make this gnoming pack a sort of grail bag for many carry enthusiasts as well as urban techwear fashionistas all over the world. So let me start by giving you a quick overview of this bag. Keep in mind this is the V2 and there is an older V1 still out there, uh, not, no longer sold at retail. Um, so there may be some differences between those two. So this bag, as mentioned, belongs to Arcteryx's Valence Diffusion sub-brand, and that brand is characterized by taking those high-tech outdoor materials and applying them to like urban, design, urban fashion. Um, it's quite fashionable. Um, obviously, that's in the eye of the beholder, but it's, if you're attracted to that sort of techwear minimalist aesthetic, you're going to love this bag. Um, it's a great size for EDC. There's no official like literage I could find, but it's, I'd say it's around 20 liters, maybe a little bit more. Um, the main volume of the bag is very capacious, um, but it needs to be packed out with the right kind of loadout. Um, the laptop compartment itself is very well structured and very rigid and very protective. Um, and it has a separate spot for documents or a tablet or something as well as your laptop. The rigidity and construction of the bag, however, means that it doesn't stand up on its own. And the slipperiness of the material means that it tends to slide when you prop it up against like a chair or something like that. The shoulder straps, as mentioned, are made out of the kind of same harness material as um, Arcteryx's climbing harnesses. And they're comfortable up to moderate loads, but the lack of a sternum strap and the lack of padding means that with heavier loads, you're really gonna start to feel it on this. Um, now, let's talk about who this bag is for. So as I mentioned, this bag is a grail bag for a lot of carry enthusiasts and also kind of urban fashionistas. You're gonna know if you're in this category when you look at this bag. This is a dream bag for the minimalist or techwear aesthetic, I think, due to its combination of like these high-tech materials and kind of all black minimalist styling. Um, and finally, I think this is a surprisingly useful EDC bag for deep-pocketed folks living in rainy urban environments, such as like the Pacific Northwest, you know, my Bay Area tech folks, etc. Now, in terms of who this bag is not for, right? Well, obviously the budget conscious are those who don't or can't place a lot of um, or who don't place a lot of emphasis or a premium, excuse me, on design. Uh, I think it's a very hot bag, but there's just no way objectively I can say this bag is worth $800, uh, no matter how you know, well designed it is, um, unless you include that huge design premium in there. Uh, people who are carrying a lot of pokey or delicate kind of bulky objects like keyboards, cameras, stuff like that, you can definitely fit them in the capacity of this bag, but because of this bag has no padding and it's very thin walls, like you're gonna get banged around and you have to kind of be careful about them. And then finally, for my sternum strap homies or for people looking for a kind of crossover style outdoor easy bag, this bag is squarely aimed at the urban use set, urban commuter, so this is not gonna be a great bag for that. So with that out of the way, let's start by looking at the exterior of the bag. The bag has two sections. So it has this front main section here, um, which I'll talk about in a second, and then it has this laptop rigid section in the back. Um, the first thing that you look at, you notice when you look at the bag is it has this really interesting combination of like a curved, kind of rounded, domed, dimensional shape married to like a very rigid, square, structured back. Like there's this, almost like this big square flat thing and then this dome over the top of it. It's a really interesting aesthetic to both behold and to wear. And it's relatively flat in depth. This bag is actually relatively flat in depth if you squish it down. And that's because this material itself has like, there's no padding or anything structure to it other than some of the dimensioning and the fabric. Um, now, as I mentioned, uh, this bag, due to its shape, will just flop over. It's not really, I haven't found any reliable way of packing it out that makes it stand up on its own. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the bag is sort of slippery, so it tends to slide down. So it spends a lot of time when you prop it up, right? So it tends to spend a lot of time either like this or like this, um, which is not great. Or, you know, usually hanging it off the back of a chair or something like that, or maybe a hero clip up at the top. Um, but still, 
I like that there's this sort of structure and visual dimensioning that this bag manages to achieve simply from the use of like this really cool patterning. If you can see here, like this really cool patterning that they have all at the, across the dome part of the bag. And then the sort of semi rigid structure of this, this uh, AC squared fabric. Um, I, I like that. It, 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 retain, it looks good even when it's empty or even when it's loaded out because of that. And it does it without like these artificial paddings or like sidewalls or anything like that. It's a very rare bag. I don't really know of many other bags that have managed to do that. It doesn't really give you bag sag, no matter how empty or how full it is. I did mention the AC squared material before. It's waterproof. Um, and then the seams are taped here, um, which is very nice. And then besides that, um, and, and oh, sorry, besides that, like it's also a very, like I think durable material. Um, I have some of the other bags that are made from the AC squared material, like the Alpha FL or Alpha 30 uh, outdoor kind of bags. And I've had those for years and I've never gotten any rips in them. Um, you can see I've had this bag for several years now. You can see like sort of how it's kind of worn in and there's a bit of like scuffing and stuff along the, along the edges and the corners and stuff, but no like rips or tears. And uh, for me, like I think this adds a bit of character to the bag. Um, besides the AC squared material, you get these nice waterproof zippers. Um, there's with like very low profile, uh, valent style, uh, pull, pull, pulls on them. There's no zipper garage, but the nice thing is you can run the zippers all the way to the bottom here. And then any water that falls is not going to get in through these waterproof zippers. Uh, overall, like obviously this isn't a roll top dry bag, but it is extremely water, water resistant. There's some friction to using these zippers. Um, this is obviously worn in over the years, um, but for the most part, it's still like a two hand affair to kind of open and to, to close it, I guess. Um, here. <clears throat> and then the only other thing you really notice about the outside of the bag is there really isn't anything else. Like I think that that's why a lot of people describe this bag as evoking a minimalist aesthetic. So turning the bag around to the back, the first thing you notice, as I mentioned, is this big square rigid thing. This thing is like wearing a flat board against your back. There's no like air channels or padding or anything. It does get kind of sweaty, but there's, you know, obviously like some natural curve for your lumbar. Um, or small of your back is. And so you do get a bit of airflow, um, but it's very much like this big flat board. And for me, I prefer bags to have a little bit of organic feel to them. Um, and this one does not flex at all. I mean, it flexes, sorry, but it's just like this big flat thing against your back. It feels sort of artificial, if I'm being honest. Um, now, usually with, I don't know, usually, but like in a bag like this, one of the challenges is that you would get like a turtle effect because it's like this big flat thing and then it's this dome. And like, if you look at like the North Face um, access pack, that's like a, you get this big turtle shell effect. This one, because there is some squish to the fabric, even though it is a very like rigid flat back married to a dome, it doesn't look too turtleish in my opinion, but it is very distinctively a no mean uh, silhouette. I can spot somebody wearing one of these like a mile away or whatever, just from the silhouette itself. The shoulder straps, as I mentioned, are made out of the same material as Arcteryx's climbing harnesses. Um, they're very, very flat and there's no like edges on them. And there's no like padding, no load lifters, no nothing. They're just very flat, low profile, a little bit of squish. They're very robust. Um, and that's how they approach load carriage with this bag. Up to a moderate load, I think it's fine. Once it starts to cross over that, the lack of a sternum strap really starts to hurt because it starts to kind of pull back on your shoulders. And then also, the kind of surface area of this is just reaches its limit and you're going to start to feel it on your shoulders kind of cutting in and you'll wish maybe for a little bit more padding. But up until moderate lows, they're all right. And I obviously like the aesthetic. I personally wish there were a sternum strap. Uh, at the bottom here, you're going to notice that they've got a dangle free experience going on. Um, it's a very nicely, very superbly integrated kind of um, strap keeper here that runs the full length. You still can adjust it, but it doesn't like dangle and you don't have to fuss with it. Um, made out of fabric and then inside there is a hidden um, buckle to kind of adjust it that's covered by this sort of harness material. It's hard to adjust the first time you have to kind of like dig your hands in there or whatever and pull it but once you do it does not slip. I adjusted this like once when I got it years ago and I have never touched it since. Um, so I really like that. I think that's a very cool minimalist aesthetic there. Um, now flipping the bag around let's look in the main compartment here. So this bag opens up like a clamshell this and you can just flip it all the way open 
And right away, what I want you to notice here is that the bag like material is very flexible, but still retains some structure. You can kind of see I'm just holding it up, but it still retains its structure. And that's cool, right? Because it gives you this high accessibility. You can literally get into the entire bag, but you still get some nice shaping when it is closed. So next thing you notice is high vis white contrast interior and tape seams. For those of you who have seen like my Arcteryx uh, carrier duffel um, review is gonna look exactly like this. Um, you're gonna notice in here, um, I'll take out what I have here for a second. Uh, this um, is basically unadorned. Um, there's nothing in here. And this is where I wanna talk briefly about what kind of loads this thing excels at. Um, the ideal case for something like this is something like a puffy jacket or a rain jacket where you can just stuff it in at the bottom and then you know, it makes perfect use of sort of the capacity of, of the bag and the volume and the shaping, um, but it doesn't like, you don't have to worry about throwing the bag down or whatever. Maybe the second ideal case for that is like you do that and then you put some stuff on top of it, right? Where this is sort of like the padding or whatever. Um, great, fine. You can also put like a rain jacket or whatever because this is waterproof. Now, in reality, <laughs> uh, most people don't carry around puffy jackets. You're usually, on the regular, you're usually wearing it if you need one or else you don't need one. So where I have chosen to, um, you know, this is how I would, how I do carry in this bag. I would take something like, you know, these uh, Sony noise canceling headphones, the whatever they are, WH-1000 XM3s or whatever. And they're nice because they're big and they're bulky. Um, they got their own uh, hard protective case. So I throw that in there. I take something like a Bellroy uh, pouch with like chargers and a mask and cables and stuff. And this is also a little bit padded and I throw that in there. And it's something like a Bellroy notebook where honestly, I wish there were like an admin pouch or something there, but that's fine. You just throw that in there. And then this is the kind of loadout where it does take advantage of the fact that there's like dimension to this bag, but you don't need to worry too much if you just drop the bag down, it's also fine. And again, it kind of looks nice, you know, if you um, don't have anything up here. Where you do need to be thinking about the loadout, however, is if you were to do something like, for example, I don't know, um, a keyboard and like a laptop stand, a Roos laptop stand, maybe a Kindle and I don't know, like a camera. Well, first of all, you're definitely going to want to um, put the camera inside of like a padded case. So if you put stuff like this in here, it obviously fits and it's great, it's no problem, okay. Um, the problem is because there's no padding, there's no sidewalls, there's nothing. If you set this down, all of that's gonna hit the ground with full force. There's nothing here, it's just this thin fabric. And so I always feel like I have to be careful or delicate with this bag. I wanna watch if I like, I'm actually gonna hit a table when I turn or something like that. There's not gonna be any protection for my gear. So I think that's what I mean when I say you have to have the right kind of loadout in here. I personally would not usually, I mean, I have carried in here, but I would not usually carry something like this in here. Rather, like I said, I'd go for something with a little bit more protection and padding. And it's okay that it has an extra bulk because they can kind of take it. You can also fit like a water bottle or something in there, no problem. And it just all kind of, you know, easily fits into the capacity of the bag. The next thing you'll notice in here, and let me remove these so we can see, um, is this top pocket, top organizer pocket up here. Um, I like this pocket a lot. And this is the first of two interior kind of sub pockets. This pocket runs the entire length of the bag, uh, width of the bag, and it has its own dimension if you look, like it has its own dimension. And I like that it's up at the top because that means you can fill up the bottom of the bag with stuff, still have this up here. You can also still kind of just unzip the top of the bag and access in here. I use this pocket for things that I want access to, but not regularly. And I'd also don't want floating around in my bag. So concretely, that's something like the Nomad um, battery, a uh, USB battery, uh, external battery and some cables. Uh, it's going to be like my extra mask in this like kind of, um, papery times blue bottle mask, uh, holder. Uh, it's going to be like my little kit of like EDC goods, like a chapstick and a, which I've lost the lid to, um, a ever ratchet tool, a lighter, a flashlight and a pen. And then beyond that, that's really it. That's what I would carry in something like this. You can also carry like a laptop charger or something like that in there. The inside of this pocket, you just get like the standard valence hang tag and then like a cheap little um, key loop. I keep my keys in another pocket that I'll show you here in a second. So it's very easy to load this back because the pocket is, has its own dimension in this big wide zipper here. 
So throw this back in here and then we're going to zip this back up and let's move on to the second compartment, which is the laptop compartment. Now the laptop compartment opens all the way like this. And what that means is it's from here all the way up to around right here. And if you look at it from the side, the first thing you notice is you have this thing up here. And that's because there's two pockets, there's two kind of compartments that this area has been bisected into. I'll talk about this one in a second. Looking at the laptop compartment itself, there's in the very back here, the laptop area. And this has got the back, the very stiff frame sheet in the back is one part of it. It has this very thick and um, padded uh, divider as the other part. And there's padded side walls and bottoms all around. So it's extremely protected. This part snaps shut with a magnet, which is super cool. Like it kind of holds like this square, like, let me see if I can show you here. A little bit hard to show you because of the tolerances, but like this seals shut like this. And in front, you have an additional very soft fabric-y divider. Um, I use this for my iPad Pro, um, but you obviously are supposed to use it for like business papers or whatever. The laptop compartment itself, the one in the back here, um, can fit, I have in here right now a 13-inch MacBook Pro, but you can fit a 15-inch MacBook Pro in here, no problem. It's a fairly, it's, I don't know, it's about this thick of a compartment. So, you know, you, if you have a super thick laptop, you will get a bit of bulge, but you know, anyway. Um, for the most part, I think it's going to be just fine. The other thing that's interesting is there's actually more dimension. Oops. Uh, so there's actually more kind of padding or sorry, not padding dimension here beyond just the little flat document pocket, flat document pocket. So you can fit like another laptop or another magazine or something, big flat thing in there uh, without any problems. Um, which I think is very useful. Now the padding at the bottom sort of stops halfway through. So you, you know, if you throw another laptop and then you might want to put it in the case, but generally I find this back flat area to be fairly capacious. So turning the bag around to the top here. Um, so actually earlier when I was talking, something fell out, but, um, this is like the top dump pocket. And I love this pocket because it's super easy to access from the top of the bag. So this is if I, you know, put the bag down, I can kind of unzip here and kind of, you know, for example, put the bag down and I can unzip and get in here and then zip back up. And even though it's a first order pocket, um, I feel that there's enough security, especially if you run the zipper all the way down kind of halfway here, that I have no problems putting my wallet and stuff in there. So I have in there like uh, a phone right now. This is the Sony Xperia one Mark II. Um, I have, Bellroy Apex wallet. I have uh, like a little coin pocket, a coin purse, and then like another chapstick for some reason, and then like my keys. Um, and then if you look at this compartment, it's kind of this big dump type. I like that it has these overhangs on each side here, and it's really in sort of like some width at the bottom, so it's super easy to just throw things in there. And you don't have to worry about like precisely fitting it or anything. It just sort of swallows it up and it's easy to zip up. And then, like I said, very easy to, um, you know, unzip it, get in and out of it and then zip it back up. And so that's a, that's a cool level of kind of, you know, organization. I feel like between the interior pocket here and the one at the top here, that makes it quite useful for EDC use. So, um, ha having been said overall, what do I think about this bag? Well, honestly, I have sort of mixed feelings about it. Like I think it's just kind of okay in terms of how it wears, like, Comfortable up to moderate loads, yes, but I don't like the rigid back frame. Like I said, I feel it's just a little artificial, never really disappeared into my back. Um, I do think that the sternum straps are, or sorry, that the shoulder straps are comfortable, but I don't think they're super comfortable, how I've seen other people kind of describe them. And I don't really like some of the trade-offs of the back compartment being so rigid, like specifically the fact that it flips over and then slides with the material and all that. Um, I also have mixed feelings about this main compartment. So, I like that it's very, you know, it can carry a lot of stuff. I like that there's some structure to it and that it looks good even when it's not uh, filled up. Um, but I do think that it's sort of limited in some of the loads it can carry because of the lack of padding and the lack of sidewalls. Um, of course, there's also things that I like about that and some of them are the same that I don't like, which is the lack of sidewalls and padding makes this bag super cool in terms of like how light it is and how good it looks 
even when empty and also giving you a good capacity to volume ratio. So on the days when I am carrying a puffy jacket or I am carrying a rain jacket and some gear, like this is a great bag for that, especially like when it's super rainy, you know, and I put on like my, uh, my valence, you know, monitor jacket or, um, um, you know, and, and I put on this bag and I've got my waterproof boots on, like, oh, we're ready. Like we're ready to tackle like the rainy urban <laughs> environment. Um, I also like the moderate levels of organization on this bag. Like I mentioned, those two pockets are surprisingly useful and they have a lot of like ease of in and out access, which I think is great. And I also like the overall aesthetic, right? The shaping, the dimensioning, um, the all black, everything, the use of the high tech fabrics, that's super cool. Um, now, do I think people should buy this bag? Well, you need to start thinking about the price on this, right? I have a lot of mixed feelings for an $800 bag. And I think that in general, Arc'teryx is obviously expensive, Valence even more expensive, but you're paying even beyond that a crazy design premium for this bag. Like, it's a great bag. I don't know that it's $800 great unless you're accounting for a significant several hundred dollar premium for the design, I guess. Um, I think that if you're considering whether to buy this bag or not, you should really think about, do you have loadouts regularly that would take advantage of sort of the unique properties and of, of this bag overall that I've kind of mentioned? Uh, do you live in an area where like, you know, for example, you're getting a lot of rain um, and you would regularly take advantage of that aspect of this bag? Um, is this your style of bag? If, like I said, design is a huge part of what you're paying for here. So the answer is yes, then maybe, right? Um, I don't regret buying this bag. Like I said, it was like my, my first grail bag um, and I've had it for many years, but my feelings have changed over the years about this bag. Um, and I loved it so much when I got it. And over the years, as my, my carry got dialed in and my knowledge of the carry world grew and new bags came on the market, I find myself using this one less and less, maybe a couple times a year at this point. Honestly, it's just sort of sitting on my shelf for the most part. Um, you know, um, I don't regret it, but I do think there are probably other bags that are more suited to my daily urban EDC use than this bag. So speaking of that, if you're in the market for a bag like this, what are some other bags that you might want to consider? Well, first and foremost, I think you'd want to look at the Arcteryx Granville 16. So this is often referred to colloquially as the poor man's, um, you know, valent, uh, poor man's nomine. It's a much smaller bag, but it, you can immediately see it shares a lot of the same design cues as the, uh, as the valence bag, as the nomine bag. Same AC squared material, albeit in a slightly more like consumer, you know, type of, of, of design. Um, it uh, has um, dual compartments. Same as the uh, valence here. Uh, sorry, I'll uh, open it up here. Dual compartments. Um, top kind of dump pouch. Um, straps are a little bit, you know, more common. Um, traditional padded ones, you get a shoulder or a sternum strap back here. More flexible frame sheet. Um, I think that there's a lot more limited carrying capacity in this one. Obviously, it's a 16 liter, it's smaller, but also like even this laptop compartment, I think would struggle to fit a 15 inch. I don't know if I ever got a 15 inch in here, uh, in this one, sorry, successfully or not. Um, but it's far more affordable than the Valence one. And I think you get a lot of the same design cues. Um, and it also kind of probably would do a little bit better outdoorsy for short day trips. So this is definitely a bag to kind of check out. Um, a second bag that I think uh, a lot of people might want to consider is the Air Day Bag. Again, you can see very clearly some you know, similar design cues on here. You get dual compartments on the bag, but far more organization in the air bag. The trade-off is the materials are just a little bit more, well, a lot more kind of, you know, common. Um, you know, you get like this Cordura fabric on here and then it's sort of like, I don't know, fake pleathery kind of, not quite pleather, but whatever on here. It doesn't quite have the same cool dome structured effect as the valence does. Um, and obviously the straps, while being more padded, um, are just, you know, you know much more common uh, looking. Uh, same here. So I think that, you know, practicality probably higher on this bag. Uh, fashion far higher on this bag. This bag incredibly uh, affordable compared to this. If, you know, 
you're like, I don't necessarily want to have the Air or the Granville, um, but I also don't really want to pay 800 bucks for a grail bag. Um, you might want to consider the Rolf Mia Shift Day Pack V2. This one is around $600. Um, it's handmade out of Dyneema uh, composite fabric uh, by a craftsman out in um, Gifu, Japan. Uh, it's very, very sleek, same aesthetic, a little bit smaller, I think, than this bag. Um, same moderate levels of organization, um, maybe slightly higher organization uh, on this bag than on the um, valence bag. Um, I've done a full review on this bag. Uh, in my channel so go ahead and check that out if you'd like this is a, a very very nice bag as well still extremely expensive but not as expensive as the valence i believe and finally this bag is a very different bag um, but it's in sort of i included in here because it's another example of what happens when you take a company that sort of lets their design ethos go wild and money is no object this is the bellroy apex pack um, i will do a full review of this bag in the future there's some others out there already um, this bag is around $600, I think, uh, US. It's a very different style of bag, um, though uh, obviously it does have some, some, some sort of similarities, like the, the, the sort of clamshell style opening or whatever, water resistant fabric, etc. But it's another thing that, you know, again, like I said, if you just want to explore what happens when companies take their design to the extreme, uh, maybe something else to look into. And so that's it, really. Um, if you have any questions um, about this bag, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And if you have any bags that you would like me to review, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. And if I own it, I will review it. Thank you very much.